because you now have other responsibilities. Those responsibilities are called discipline and discretion, um, you know, um, kindness. So stepping out of the realm of he's out in the desert and embracing the concepts or the ideas that as we become our master, the master of our universe, we have before us the proposition of who are you going to exclude from your universe? Who are you not going to allow into your kingdom of heaven? Because the kingdom of heaven is open to all. And as you start excluding people from your kingdom, I think we read here the one day, uh, I don't know, some, something that somebody had created about the concept of exterminating all of those people that had this, that, or the other thing about them and the end person on the list is if we had exterminated them or had not allowed them to live, we would have killed off Beethoven before he got here. Not a very good idea. Everyone should be allowed within the kingdom. Now the interesting thing about that is it's called the perfect law of liberty. Many are called, few are chosen. It's open to all, but very few have the wherewithal or the understanding to accept and to be there, and those are chosen. And they're not, as Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And there is a difference. It's remarkable we could parade any number of thousands through this door. And there's many that have come, and you see they come one week and they're gone. We don't see them again because they don't see or understand or are not ready for what it is this teaching has to offer. Recently in California, we have Proposition 8, and there's this whole band of religious folk out there putting up a bunch of money to stimulate a lot of people to vote on passing Proposition 8, which calls for nothing less than the changing of our Constitution here in the state of California. That's how adamant they are about that. And I suppose if they woke up one day and found out it was changed so that they had lost some fundamental right, they might not be too happy about it. And somehow in their wisdom, they consider themselves brilliant enough to determine what goes on in your life, my life, what goes on in this place, what goes on in my kitchen, in my bedroom, or anything else. Unreal, unreal. To learn to live peaceably with all men and allow others to live and have their kingdom is an essential part of our spiritual growth. And for this church and this organization, all of us here must understand that. It's not for us to start excluding what other people do. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's okay to go out and be a bank robber or, you know, be a mind fuhrer or any of the rest of that. That's not what I'm discussing here at all because mind fuhrer will get his own just rewards in the end. I do know that when Jesus was hung on a cross, he had two thieves next to him. He didn't have two honest, upright men. He had two thieves. And Let's not get to the thought that, well, that's why they were on the cross, because there was a third guy, Jesus was on that cross, and he had done nothing wrong. So it is possible for someone to be wrongly accused and be up on that cross. And of those two thieves, one accepted and one did not. One was ready for something new and different. So we may have a thief that walks through the door, and one may be ready and one may be not. So it's not for us to judge that. 
It is for us to be open to the coming of Christ within ourselves and to all of our fellow men. And if somehow I have not made it clear, he's not going to come on a golden chariot out there for 10 million of us to see at the same time. And if it happens, I will apologize. <laughs> okay? It's not how it goes. Nor is he going to be in a golden spaceship. And if we want to say that Christ was an alien, terrific. I don't care. And if we're descendants of that alien that created this planet, that's fine. To us, he is still an elder brother, a god, whatever you want to refer to him. He came here to show us that the way that we were living was not exactly up to snuff and that we had other potential within us. Not only did he give us that fact that we have other potential, he showed it. And then he said, look, see all this stuff I do? You guys can do it too. And greater than this. What's your choice? So our choice is, what do we want to be? Do we want to be the rich man that piles it up over there in the corner? He says, look what I got. Okay? Or do we want to be the expression of love, of peace, of harmony, of joy? The expression of being that brings healing to our fellow man. Because it is our choice, and we can have the pile of rubble in the corner, as I call it, or jewels, or diamonds, or whatever. But then we're going to have to hire people to make sure no one steals it from us. And then we're going to have to watch the guys we hired so that they don't, I, you know, it gets very complicated out there. It is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is within. The things that Jesus did, we can do, and greater things. Whether he's the son of God, whether he's a man that attained the Christ consciousness, whether he's an alien that came to the planet to advise us of this fact, I really don't care. The point is, we can do all of those things and greater, and it's for us to do that and start working within each of us and stop looking out there for someone to come and magically wave a wand and change conditions. The kingdom of heaven is within. That's it. I'm done on this topic for today. <laughs> All right.